Alrighty everybody, so I have a really fun build here. Uh, this is a true werewolf wolf pack build. Uh, you will be running around utilizing all of the werewolf abilities as well as utilizing werewolf companions. I do have ravens in here for a bit of extra damage. However, I'm going to show you a couple of variations that you can run uh, depending on what you're doing because this honestly should be pretty good for the majority of the game. Uh, the issue is once you get into the really high-end stuff, you're going to have to make uh, more defensive choices. So there's going to be some things that we're, we would have to drop uh, in order to take things like debilitating roar and stuff like that. So this right here is what you can run. And this is going to take you through the majority of the game uh, with very little problems. You know, you'll have your resistances, you'll have, uh, you know, your armor cap, uh, stuff like that, right? So first off... Um, Let's go ahead and go over the legendary powers for this. So we have uh, the violent aspect because this is going to be utilizing rabies. Uh, with the buff of shepherd's aspect, it makes it very easy to run shred and rabies uh, in the same build because they both benefit uh, from a couple of different aspects. One being the changes to changeling's debt. So you deal 55% increased damage while hitting a poisoned enemy as a werebear or a crowd controlled enemy as a werewolf. Um, then you look at uh, this, it says core and wrath skills deal an additional 15% damage per companion you have. So they both benefit from having the companions on the board, which is pretty cool. Now, I did throw Aspect of the Alpha on the two-handed weapon, uh, but I'll go over that in a second. So uh, that's, the main, so that's uh, kind of the reasoning behind running Rabies, because we can just make it do a lot of damage. So we're going plus 8 to Wolves, max life, armor, Wolves attack speed, and... Uh, uh, again, in some more maximum life, just to really tank us up. On the chest piece, we're going damaging, me, damaging an enemy has up to a 20% chance to daze them for uh, for two seconds. You deal 20% increased damage to dazed enemies. This is just a 20% extra damage mod. Now, if you're having survivability issues, you could very easily just change this out with Aspect of Might, since we are using Claw, and that'll really uh, that'll really help out uh, quite a lot. Oh, that's wrong. Okay. Um, we have max life armor, resist all wolves, and max life again. Uh, moving right along to the gloves, we have critical strike chance, critical strike damage, plus five to shred, uh, wolves damage, and wolves attack speed. Now, if you look at the damage options here, you don't necessarily have to go wolves. This is just what I'm going. Um, but if you look here, you see so you have werewolf attack speed, you have rabies damage you could go. And this is just to show you guys, you also have lacerate damage if you want to try to do a bunch of lacerate damage. Um, I wouldn't recommend the lacerate, lacerate though because you have so many multiplicative multipliers. Either doing rabies or the werewolf uh, or your wolf damage is going to be the best. Not really a whole lot for shred, which is kind of good in a way <laughs> because uh, it allows us to be able to just go like wolf's damage without feeling bad about it, <laughs> you know, so... Um, yeah, uh, then wolf attack speed so they can attack faster and then aspect of changelings debt So we have a 55% damage amp uh, When we're hitting something as a werewolf uh, As long as they are crowd controlled now. I don't believe this affects your werewolves. So this isn't affecting them But <clears throat> again, you have to remember this is more of a theme build So there is going to be a little bit of give in some places right in order for us to have like that nice theme But this build while well, it's not going to be like some s tier build because, you know, most S-tier builds, if you're familiar with ARPGs, are you pick one skill and then you kind of put everything into that skill. That's generally speaking the best way to play most builds and most ARPGs. So, uh, yeah, generally speaking, there's obviously exceptions to that. But, yeah, so there is going to be a little bit of give here. So, like, for example, instead of running Edge Masters, which would technically affect everything, but the thing is, is we are using Spirit, and so we don't, and we really don't want our Spirit to be full because I'm going to be running Ancestral Guidance, so we're kind of losing in some areas, but then we're actually gaining it back in others. So um, I think the way I think the way this is going to turn out is you'll see kind of a minimal loss in the Wolves damage and uh, a, a very minimal loss in Rabies and Shred damage as well, right? Okay, uh, so moving right along. Um, to, we are going Storm's Companion, so we're doing this because this really helps amp up our wolves. It gives us really good control over them. It gives us damage reduction, companion movement speed. Uh, it's really going to help us move very quickly across the map and really have that wolf pack vibe going. Um, oh, another thing you can do 
uh, as well here. If you do not want to run this, if you're at lower levels where you don't necessarily need to run the, the resist all, because I do have this stuff um, a little bit kind of uh, situated to be kind of specific in order to hit your max resistances and your armor. But you know, if you're doing lower stuff, you're like, let's say world tier three or something, right? And your armor capped and all that, and uh, you know, you don't, your resistances are fine. You're not like getting one shot by things. You can always run Mad Wolf's Glee. This will keep you in werewolf form all the time. It gives you damage reduction against poison enemies, and it gives you a plus three rank to all your werewolf skills, which is pretty good. Now, unless they make Aspect of the Alpha turn this into a werewolf skill, um, it, this will not affect this will not affect your wolves, but I do think uh, I do think this is still pretty good because it will affect your rabies and give them 16 ranks, and it will affect your shred, giving that uh, a whopping uh, 13 ranks. Yeah, so 16 and 13 ranks, right? So you'll have a ton of ranks, and 20 ranks into wolves, by the way. So just really, really fun stuff going into season four here. Okay, so uh, moving right along, we got the wind striker aspect. This is going to give us move speed when we crit. Uh, we're going to go movement speed, max life, plus 8 to rabies is going to be. So we're going to try to hit the triple masterwork on rabies. We might not do it. It's really not a big deal. Don't worry too much about what I have triple masterwork. If you don't hit it, it that's going to be really hard to get. So like, don't feel like, oh my god, you have to have this. Like, Yes, it's ideal, but remember, you can either play the game or spend all day in town. Your choice. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. Okay. But yeah, wolf's attack speed, movement speed. So just this is just we're trying to go fast with our boots and maximize rabies damage with them, right? So awesome. Uh, moving right along to the weapon. So with the weapon, I did opt. This is where I say talk about the give and take. Since I gave a little bit for the wolves to run things like change league's debt, and I'm also not running some stuff in the paragon, I did opt to put this on a two-hander just so I could get a little bit more juice into my werewolves or into my werewolf companions. Um, to make them do uh, a bit more damage because remember guys going into season four wolves are going to have 200 percent increased health and 50 percent reduced respawn rate so they're going to be so instead of respawning every 10 seconds they will be responding every five seconds so wolves should be a lot more effective right so if you didn't see the patch notes the final patch notes they released after the developer update Yes, wolves are getting a very big survivability buff, and I really suspect that they're going to do pretty well. Um, and even if they do still die, the fact that they just reduce the respawn rate really makes a big difference because now you're not just sitting there with your thumb up your A, you know, wondering, oh, well, now what the heck do I do, you know? Oh, and also the other thing about this build, or actually I'll go over that later, but um, yeah, so... We're going to go critical strike damage, attack speed, willpower, wolves damage, and up to a 40% chance to deal uh, 66,000 physical damage. The reason we do this is because, you know, we have wolves. We also have ravens, right? Both of these have a high lucky hit coefficient. Uh, we run claw. This has a high lucky hit coefficient. We can just utilize, even if this is going to get nerfed, by the way, it's not going to do as much damage as it did on the PTR. But even so, this is still going to be one of the best stats for this build because we have so many ways to proc this lucky hit right and that's what we want okay now uh, moving right along to the amulet so a real quick disclaimer i do not know if clarity is going to make it to the live servers people are kind of suspecting they're going to change this because it's kind of insane that you can run clarity on your rings and your amulet so if they do change this um, we are going to go you can switch it back to like wolf cdr or something like that um, but the clarity is just too good to not run currently. So like if, if that is the case, you definitely want to try to temper clarity. If you don't know what clarity does, every time you cast a companion skill, it's going to give you a stack of clarity. So after casting companion skill, your next core or wrath, so this affects rabies and shred, uh, is going to deal, have a 15% increased critical strike chance, and the damage is going to be increased up to 45%. You do the math. So like right now, with three ranks in it, it can go up to 45%. Um, that means that if we have, oh God, 4, 8, 12 more ranks, you're talking about like another 150, 160% increased damage to your rabies or your shred. So like the idea behind this build is you're going to want to cast wolves, you're going to want to cast ravens, and then you're going to want to use rabies, and then you're going to want to use shred. Now, what you can do is you can wait until you get a reset with pack leader and do it again. So you're not going to be making full use and full efficiency of clarity because you do need to cast uh, three companion skills to get clarity 
to max, right? So keep that in mind. All right. Uh, moving, uh, moving right along, right? So we want Call of the Wild, Critical Strike Chance, and Venom, Wolves Damage, Clarity. We're running Shepherd's Aspect on this. Big damage amp. Big reason why we're running Ravens is because we're running Shepherds. It just really juices our rabies and our shred. Uh, moving on to the aim or to the ring, we're going aspect to the stampede again. Juices up our shepherd's aspect by giving us another wolf, another raven, uh, and then critical strike chance, critical strike damage, attack speed, wolves damage, uh, ring of the blurred beast. So while dashing, shred seeks out nearby poisoned enemies, dealing 40% increased damage to them. So you're going to want to open with your rabies, and then you're going to want to do your shred. This is going to do that really cool blink effect. It's really going to make you feel like a werewolf. Really make you feel like you know you're dashing back and forth, killing things. It's gonna feel so good. Uh, like thematically, this build is just gonna be so fun to play. I think. Um, yeah. So attack speed, crit chance, crit damage, wolves damage, uh, clarity, cool stuff. All right. Uh, I went a topaz. I went a shadow resist gem and a cold resist gem. Keep in mind the way that you're gonna hit 70%. It's probably gonna be different because you have to remember I'm sitting here on a calculator that has perfect stats on everything. You're not gonna have perfect stats on everything. I'm not even gonna have perfect stats on everything, right? So remember to adjust your build as you go uh, to hit those stat break points. And remember that when you're on World Tier 2, 3, it's not as important, right? So it really only matters once you start getting in, up into the higher end stuff of World Tier 4. Um, so yeah, and that's when you might wanna, that's when changes are gonna be considered, but I'll go over those in a second. Okay, so uh, skill tree here, going over the skills. So, you know, claw, Enhanced Claw, Wild Claw, solid choice. Uh, it procs Pack Leader the best out of any skill in the game or that the Druid has really currently. Um, moving right along, Wild Impulses. And then we want Shred. We want Primal Shred. This gives us another 30% multiplicative critical strike damage increase uh, when we use four Shred specifically. So keep in mind we have three of those. We have In Venom, we have Avian Wrath, and then we have the shred. So this thing's getting 90% increased uh, multiplicative like critical strike damage. Wild stuff. Okay. Moving right along. Uh, Ancestral Fortitude, Vigil... Oh, hold on. This is not right. I need to take these out. I so sorry, I so sorry, I so sorry. We don't want these. want this. This right here. And this. Okay, sorry if I take those out because I don't have any defensive skills on this build. Oh, wait, no take that back we actually don't want this we do want this I'm, I'm insane in the membrane we want this we want at least this because this gives you non-physical resist okay yeah we don't want to ruin our no i guess it's not actually making too much of a difference it's not actually huh that's interesting is this not actually i guess it's not calculating in our skills for some reason so this actually is a good thing it might mean we don't need that but I'm gonna leave it in there just in case, but yeah. So anyway, so wolves, uh, enhanced wolf pack, brutal wolf pack, 25% damage amp for wolves. Uh, plus, you know, whenever you crit, you get 25% increased attack speed. That's gonna help you hit that attack speed cap with your wolves. Clarity, ravens just for the enhanced uh, shepherd's juice. Call of the wild companion skills deal 60% increased damage. Pretty baller. Coming down here, neurotoxin, toxic claws, in venom uh, for. A Whopping 50% bonus, critical strike damage against poison enemies, rabies, uh, enhanced rabies, that's wrong, we want this, we want savage rabies, the reason for this is because uh, if it will deal its damage faster, that's better and more so what we want. Uh, we don't want it because we don't really have a way to detonate the damage because Bird Beast doesn't do that anymore, so kind of unfortunate, but oh well. Then we're using Lacerate, Primal Lacerate, Supreme Lacerate. The reason why we're taking this, I know it says shape-shifting skills, but... There was a change in the patch notes. They haven't put an update on max roll yet. This actually now affects all damage you deal. So um, this is no longer just limited to shape-shifting skills. So that means this will actually buff your companion damage as well. So that means you get to run this really cool werewolf ability. It has a really low CD compared to the ultimates. Only 35 seconds. So, and me personally, I think it's just, it's a really fun ability to run, and it gives you a 40% damage amp, so I think that's actually pretty good. You could go Petrify if you wanted to, but I'm sticking with the Werewolf theme here. And then we have Ursine Strength. So this is just wall healthy, deal 30% increased damage. The reason why I took this is because I wanted to run Wild Rage, but the thing is, is it's really hard to run both with this build if we're trying to juice things up with Shepherd's Aspect. Um, 
because if I was to like drop Ravens or something like that for a defensive skill, maybe I'd switch over to Bestial Rampage since I'm not going to get anywhere near as much benefit out of Shepherd's Necklace. Maybe Wild Rage could potentially be better. I don't know. But for right now, I'm just doing Ursine Strength. Yeah, and this is kind of the you know quintessential Werewolf Wolfpack build that I'm going to be rolling with. This is most likely the build that I'm going to be playing on launch. Uh, I will most. This is most likely what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work into this build because uh, that kind of brings me to another point is that you can play this build uh, from really level one. Uh, so, you know, you just go claw, then you can just go shred. You just take all the werewolf stuff, take wolves, take ravens, and let me tell you. And then also early on, before you have access to rabies, you do want to take poison creeper when you're leveling. But... Um, because it's just really good and the companion skills are goaded. But yes, you can play this build from level one. It doesn't necessarily really require all these uh, legendaries or uniques to run. It'll run at a base level because uh, companion skills, if you're not aware, got buffed again in season three. So their base damage is just so high. So when you're in really low stuff, you really don't need anything for companions to wreck everything. Your wolves are going to do stuff even at, without aspect of the alpha. They're still going to be pretty solid, but when, then once you get Aspect of the Alpha, the damage is going to go straight to the moon. You know, GameStop to 1,000, Diamond Hands, Gorillas, right? Okay, um, yeah. And then you just come down here, obviously take Rabies. That'll be cool. And then remember, you can go find Shepherd's Aspect. Um, as you get Legendaries to drop and you unlock them and stuff like that, you can start putting them on, and your builds will get better, 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 and really, really juiced. Um, but at a base level, even without any Legendaries, this build should work. Uh, pretty damn well um, Okay, so uh, that's it for the skill tree moving on to the the paragon board. So Came up here. We took keeper. This increases our non-physical damage by 10% So a lot of our poison damage is going to go up here by quite a lot. Oh, what the heck? Uh, okay, no, that's right. Okay uh, We also get some extra juice from the all resist and we do get a little bit of uh, extra additive damage coming up here We are taking wilds um, one thing, one thing you can do, uh, one thing you can do here too as well is they did update Inner Beast and it says after shape shifting your spirit costs are reduced by 5% for 10 seconds up to 45% if you reach 10 stacks this bonus resets and reduces the cooldown of your ultimate skill by 5 seconds. This is actually really good. Um, this is something I'm thinking about potentially altering around and taking. But I want to see how it plays out in the live servers because like having cooldown reduction for lacerate sounds pretty good. And also just having spirit cost reduced by that much means you can just shred more. But at the same time, this build, you're not just shredding all the time, right? Like you're using rabies, you're using your wolves, you're clawing a little bit, you're getting resets, you're trying to proc your clarity. Like there's a little bit of combo that goes into this build. This isn't really just like a, I'm going to you know, hit my face on the keyboard kind of build, there really is some mechanics to this build of like making sure you're casting your companion skills uh, before you cast rabies and before you cast shred, et cetera, et cetera, right? Because technically what you want to do is you like you open with rabies then you go with wolves, then you go, uh, then you hit with rabies and then you can claw again until these get reset and then you would use these and then you could shred, you know, et cetera. Like there's just a lot of, um, a lot of ways to get to that end, into that end road, I guess, with this build, right? A lot of fun, uh, ways it's not it's not a very necessarily like a very linear play style okay um, but yeah so wilds big companion damage super awesome uh, moving over here spirit big crit damage uh, plus you get a 12% damage amp heightened malice up here for a 45% damage amp pretty sick um, here we have guzzler so you get a bunch of extra damage while healthy I specifically took this because it'll apply to everything and this is also an intelligence board, so we'll get a little bit more juice out of Guzzler. Um, one thing I was considering taking was Bane, um, but I don't know, because this does, this does physical damage. This, does, this is going to do lightning damage. I, I don't have just specific... The only thing that's going to affect is rabies, so I wasn't 100% certain about taking it. But it is pretty good if you get that lucky hit proc. And given rabies has such a high lucky hit chance, like it's... I don't know. could be pretty good. All right, come down here, take Ancestral Guidance. This is going to give us 30% increased damage for 5 seconds after we spend 75 Spirit, which is pretty good uh, because that inf impacts our Wolves and impacts our Ravens. So, like, a big part of how why we're shredding is just to also get Ancestral Guidance. And, then, like, once we get Ancestral Guidance going, then we want to cast Wolves, we want to cast, you know, cast Wolves, cast Rabies, 
uh, you know, wolves, ravens, into rabies, and then you have like even more damage on all those abilities. So just a lot of comboing going on. Uh, moving up here, less for carnage, critical strikes just restores our spirit, just to try to get some spirit fixing here. Uh, and I specifically also came over here to get spirit on kill for a little bit more spirit fixing. Um, I will say this, one thing you can do, is you can actually change this. Let's actually change this to resource cost reduction. I think this will be better, actually. I think that'll be better. Okay, so here we go. Critical strike damage, werewolf skill damage. Um, this also doesn't say werewolf skill anymore on the PTR, so I'm wondering if they're making this also affect your werewolves. If they do, that'd be so cool. Um, I am very interested to see how things go um, with like how they're updating the skill tags and stuff like that when all this stuff goes live. Hopefully they do something with wolves, but I doubt it. It'll probably just stay a companion skill and I'll just pray every day that uh, they change it. Anyway, uh, tutorial, sorry, tutorial, territorial, for every five dexterity purchased uh, within range, you deal 9.9% .9 increased damage to close targets. Uh, you gain 10% damage reduction against close enemies. Uh, so that's going to be pretty cool, mainly taking this for the damage reduction, because remember, damage reduction is a much rarer stat now. So taking it where you can get it is actually like even better than what it was before. And that's really going to be it for uh, the Paragon. But yeah, so again, this is probably what I'm going to end up playing. First off, I'm going to try to build into it because I just really want to play all the changes with the werewolf skills. I want to try out rabies, you know, just a lot of fun stuff to try out. Uh, oh, Spirit Boons, Wariness, Scythe, Talents, Avian Wrath, Pack Leader, and Masochistic. Um, yeah. So, anyways, guys, I really hope you like this. I think this build's going to be very, very fun. It's going to definitely have that Wolf Pack feel, if nothing else. Uh, something fun to play until you go into whatever build you want to play. Or if you just want to keep playing this, you can definitely take it really as far as you want. It's just going to be a matter of changing some of the skills around. You'll have to drop some and drop a little bit of that Wolf Pack theme so you can get, you know, kind of meta things like debilitating roar like things that reduce damage but anyways guys thanks for watching like subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you next time thanks